whether or not you believed in God or not, you could still do that stuff. Wherever yeah. it, like, and and you should, I, and I think you should. Like, I like that. It's almost like there's vested interests, you know, in people that are business minded, trying to keep you in some very petty state of like, well, why the fuck would I go give somebody a compliment when I've got money to go make? <laughs> you're in hell. That's hell, by the yeah. way. That's you're already there. You don't yeah. need to die to go there. You fucking hell bound human. You know, you're you would you have no interest in helping people doing something good that doesn't you know, yeah. no interest in that. Then you are full of trauma. Go seek therapy because you're gonna just isolate yeah you know we are the human race we definitely are social creatures yeah there, there's no sort there's no shortage of purposes that you can go out and find that you can yeah. start today if yeah. you were feeling down if you if you're stuck in a hard place nothing cures sadness like helping someone else Welcome, modern day mystics, fellow truth seekers, James and Justin, back at it again with another reaction video. In this one, we are taking a look at an atheist's perspective on the meaning of life. Right. Now, we touch on a lot of different philosophical religious belief systems and ideas of looking at the world, uh, but it's important that we don't leave people out. That yeah. remember, remember that there's all types of different ways of looking at things. And you can't be afraid to look at, you know, things that you might not necessarily agree with. Well, you can, but... Yeah. I guess you could. Should but, you? Uh, should you, yeah. Uh, and if you're watching our channel, you probably have a little bit of a, you know, a taste of open-mindedness and being able to hear what other people think. So uh, let's hear, you know, how an atheist... You can, at reality. you can really tell somebody that doesn't listen to their opponent's things, doesn't think about it much. Yeah. It's always obvious somebody that's really like ideologically possessed or, you know, and only seeing things one way. Yeah. But then you can tell somebody who's actually like considered the different sides. I feel like that's. Yeah, I apparent, totally agree. Apparent. I totally agree. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's good to challenge yourself, look at other views, and so we'll get right into this one. This is done by The Masked Arab. I don't know what that means. I haven't even seen his channel, but I did find this video and I thought it was interesting. Yeah. So, let's take a look. What is the meaning of life? I still get asked this question quite a lot by fresh ex-Muslims. I know it's just a start, and with time, they get over the sadness that comes with losing the big brother in the sky. I tried to address this before in one of my earlier videos titled A Letter to Hope, but seems like it's not enough, as I may not necessarily have addressed all the points. I'm glad the video helped Hope and a few other people a great deal, but the job is not done yet. Different people react differently. I personally feel responsible for those Muslims who lose their faith because of my work, hence it's important for me to keep addressing these issues. I have. So right off the bat, I don't know much about this guy, but I guess there's some type of communication he has with the Muslim community or something. Like that. His name's the Masked Arab, so right. I don't like, I don't know how that relates. Uh, but it seems like he deals a lot with uh, the Muslim religion, and so I guess he's the antithesis of that. He's the other side looking in, and I guess he's talking about his relationship. Or maybe his content has just struck a nerve with people. Like maybe it's in their wheelhouse they've come they've seen it and he's gotten a lot of response or comments yeah mm. struggle to understand why some atheists feel depressed after losing their imaginary friend as it never occurred to me personally when i lost my belief in god i found it extremely liberating that now my morality could evolve with better reasoning but some ex-muslims struggle with that one of my followers who lost islam recently said it on quite a few occasions that he's struggling to understand the meaning of life and it depresses him. He admitted that it's not the fact that there is no God, but it's the fact that there is no purpose. Having an afterlife and treating this life as some sort of a divine test for an eventual goal of a heaven seems meaningful enough. I said you can find any purpose you want. Life is an unasked gift. None of us asked to be born. We are somewhat lucky that we're born today and we're born as humans. We could easily have been born in the time of Romans as a slave. We could easily have been born as a sheep or a cow that gets slaughtered to satisfy someone's hunger. Or we could have been born as a circus lion or as a deer that gets eaten by a cheetah on his first day of life. It's an accident that we're born as humans, but now we're born. 
what do we do? Now, some people, they might have some contention with that accident. Some brutal imagery there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think he's just trying to tap into that nerve uh, of Empathy. kind of the rawness of reality. Uh, and I get it. Um, and uh, what I did note was when he was saying, when he kind of like lost his belief in his view of God or what he believed about God, he found it extremely liber liberating. Um, I, I resonate with that because I felt that too a bit when I, it felt like I transcended my old belief system and kind of came out of it. Uh, I found it extremely liberating and freeing like, Oh, Oh, you know, it's, you know, it's not what I thought it was. God. Uh, and, but there's also a difficult part too, which he's saying here, some people that he knows who've gone through this, they seem to be struggling this idea of purpose and meaning. And this is coming from a person, I actually believe in God. I just don't believe in it from maybe a religious traditional standpoint. Um, well, I think some of his contention might come from saying stuff like, this is what happens when they lose their imaginary friend. Like, yeah. I feel like saying, <laughs> stating it like that is going to obviously rub people that, that cherish that belief. Uh, but not that, like, I'm not judging him for saying that. That yeah. sounds like some shit I would say. You know, but uh, I'm just saying that that obviously when you start talking like that, people are going to have their feathers ruffled. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like it's all an evolution. It is all an evolution from one belief to the next. You know, one thing I think is effective to do is to maybe do a thought experiment where you're like, well, let me check with myself. How would I live if I didn't believe in God? You know, if I do believe in God, let, let me just imagine for a second, what would I do differently if I didn't believe? Would I do many things differently? Would I all of a sudden be like, fuck, I can't wait to get out there and start lying to everyone. Is that what you would do? Yeah. Or I can't wait to get out there and start really screwing people over. You know, like newsflash, if that's what your liberation from being moral gets you, yeah. that doesn't work either. That's yeah. doesn't not going to fucking work for you. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, go try. Some people got to try it. They got to try the experiment to know for sure. And then you kind of return back to like, well, what the hell is going on? What is morality then? You know, I don't believe in God. Why can't I just, you know, and then there'll be people, people come along and be like, that's because you've been brainwashed. That's because that doctrine, that ideology is so in your head now that even without believing in God, you can't just break the rules. But I'm not so sure about that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't understand why you'd necessarily want to just start breaking rules. Well, get... because here's the thing. Sometimes in religion, you can be suppressed. A lot of your natural ways of being, yeah. there's all kinds, there's been plenty of people who's the, the way they want to be sexually has been suppressed. Yep. The way they want to be, um, you know, they may have been screwed over in business because they didn't have the cutting a a edge, you know, the competition that somebody else would be, it was just business, man. I know we went golfing and I told you a bunch of stuff and I screwed you over in the end, but that's just business. Yeah. You know, and you're like, oh, if I wasn't such a fucking choir boy, I would have been more competitive and done what I had to do. Yeah. Right. So that is the reason I think sometimes people are yeah. eager to shake off their and then moral like, and then, like you said, there's that evolutionary thing. And then you, you go off and you start breaking some of those rules yeah. and then you start finding out the consequences, yeah. the real consequences of, you know, why mm -hmm. breaking those rules lead, you know, there's a, Good damn good reason whether or not it's cloaked in a, a religious ideology. Know it, thyself. A reason. Know thyself. I am a proponent of shadow work. Carl yeah. Young, Carl Young, talking about integrating the shadow. Yeah, I am a. I do believe in understanding yourself, knowing yeah. what really the dark corners of your mind are all about, what you are capable of. Yeah, and but also understanding all the good. You, you know, there's one with the other. There's all these compassionate you know, potentially parts of you. You can't speak on other people's business. Your life is between you and God and then everything else is other people's business. Mm. You know, just because somebody else seems to be getting away with shit that you are like, I couldn't even do that. Yeah. You know, I would feel too guilty to even do it, but they seem to be thriving doing that. Don't be, you know, fooled in thinking that if you apply the same attitude, it's going to work out for you. Yeah. This is a personal thing, man. Your life is as intimate as it appears to be with you and yourself and God and your perception of reality. Um, so I think that's all just got to be worked out. Yeah. You know, like think so.
Yeah, good points. A, end of a rant, I guess. Yeah, it's good. Keep going. Do. He said life is useless as it has no benefit. Really? Is it really useless and non-beneficial just because we don't get an afterlife? Is happiness not the ultimate benefit of being alive? Had we not been born, would we have known how good it feels to laugh on a meaningless joke with your best friend when you catch up with him? Or how it feels to kiss the love of your life for the first time? Would we have known that melting heart feeling when we look at our cute puppy or a kitten when it looks at you with those big eyes asking for food? We would not have known any of these feelings and million other feelings had we never been born. All these feelings are feel-good emotions and I fail to understand how any of these feelings are not benefits of life. Of course, with happiness comes sadness. With good comes evil. Life is tough. It comes with a lot of baggage and that baggage gets significantly heavier with religion. But let's just focus on the baggage of life in an atheist life. We do get sad when our loved one dies and all we have left are their memories. We do get sad when we see a helpless animal being butchered against his will just so it can end up on someone's dinner table. Or when we see the suffering of millions of children around the world whose bellies are swollen from starvation. Or when our friends betray us. We do get sad when we lose the love of our lives to some illness or some other person. All these things happen and we feel helpless in doing anything about them. But that's just an illusion. I see no greater benefit of life than being alive and being able to do something about these things. You can find a million purposes of your life. Sure, we don't always succeed, but any step towards any purpose in life is a success within itself. If this is still not convincing enough for you, then let me ask you a question. What would be your purpose of life in the afterlife? If in this life your goal is to secure a hot spot in the heaven, then that is some purpose. But once you're in heaven, what would be your purpose? Would you just be enjoying delicious foods, drinks, enviable sex with beautiful men or women? Or an occasional cup of coffee with your favorite prophet like Jesus or Moses or Muhammad? What after that? That's a great point. I think a lot of times about the promises that are given to people about the afterlife and what it would be like. And I don't know, many times I'm like, that sounds sucky. I remember you people used to tell me like, oh, the purpose of, you know, this life is, you know, you live a good life and then one day you'll get to worship God for eternity. I'm like, boring. Yeah, but <laughs> there is another way to state it. Like if I all of a sudden was the sales rep for heaven, yeah. I'd be like, you have no idea. You think you, you know, yeah, on earth we get a little taste of what worshiping the Lord is and joy. You have yet to experience things five billion infinitely more vast than what you call love and, yeah. you know and and the worship of god will sustain you like you wouldn't believe being in his actual presence well you i'm not going to do it but yeah. i'm just saying there you know depends on who's pitching the idea yeah you know like there's a way to frame it where it's like mm, boring i know one person that's like i'd rather go to hell because at least i could figure out how to get out of you know i would be how do i get out of here you know, it'd give me something to do. I know somebody that says that about the afterlife. Yeah. Or having, you know, like some goal, some something to try and achieve and go after and chase and explore. Within this life, our experience tells us that that's part of like the beauty of this reality is exploring. Think of aesthetics. Think of, imagine the way you got told the whole story was it being whipped into you. And, you know, like you're in a hell realm. We are a fallen people. You know, you can't wait for heaven. You know, they probably are like, oh, I can't wait to get out of here and go to heaven. Just praise the Lord all day because here is all about denying of myself, denying my desires. You know, um, they're like that little thing I said about knowing somebody that's like, I hope I go to hell so I can figure out how to get out of there. And what am I going to go straight to heaven and hang out with a bunch of, you know, stuffy people in heaven? Nah, I'll take hell. There's people that would be like shudder at that comment even made. You yeah. fool. You would never say anything like that if you knew. Like everything's based yeah. on fear. You know, I don't want to go to hell. That's bad. And you're foolish for even saying that because it's torment and hell. Yeah. But those are all beliefs. Has anyone gone and literally spent a substantial amount of time there and come back? I know there are stories of people that have had glimpses of the afterlife. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah, well, it's uh, uh, questions everyone's got to ask themselves. They all have to go through this and decide what they're going to choose to believe and not believe. Uh, 
And, you know, is it based upon your own personal experience? Something tangible that you've view, viewed and gone through? Or is it just something someone's telling you and you're scared? Do you build up verification rocks? Like, oh, I'm starting to question my faith. I better, but I do know one time I prayed for something and it did happen. So that proves that proves it to me and I'm on the right path. Like some kind of obsessive <laughs> yeah. compulsion. Yeah. Is well, that how that's it works? That's the thing. That's how some people work. Right. You know, but there's lots of different people from lots of different faiths. I, I imagine, I guess I don't have the proof, but I would imagine there's lots of people that have miraculous stories. And then what's the safeguard against that? Yeah, well, the devil can emulate God. Well, then this whole thing is pretty, you know, at the end of the day, is are you trusting your own experience, your own mind, soul, body, and spirit? Yeah. Or are you trusting what some person is telling you it is? Because if you're like, no, to trust your own body, body mind, soul, and spirit is foolish yeah. and wicked. Well, who do you trust then? The guy that told me about God? Okay. Yeah. Well, why I, do you trust him? Yeah. I don't know if there's anything you can do besides, like, I, you know, I try to take a holistic path. I'm intuitively looking within myself, feeling my own experiences, but I'm also not denying what everyone else is saying. Yeah. I'm trying to see what, okay, what's the consensus on what everyone's saying? And, you know, trying to put what is going on here with what's going out there and, like, match it up. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That's exactly it. Like, what else can you do beyond that? Which is what the scriptures already su- Some of them suggest is going on anyway. That it's yeah. all one thing. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Let's continue. What else would be your purpose? Would you be happy doing that for the billions of years to come? Surely you'll get bored of that. And all your favorite personalities from history would also get bored of you, too. At least in this imperfect world, we can find a lot of purposes to try to make this world a little better than before. But by definition, heaven is perfect. What would you strive for? (laughs) If by some sheer accident I end up in heaven, I think I will try to find a new purpose there. I might lead a protest in front of the palace of Allah and demand Allah to release more and more people from his torture cells in the hell. I'm not sure how this cosmic dictator would handle these protests, so let's not fool ourselves and fantasize about silly things. The concept of heaven is selfish. We are told that the good people will be in heaven and bad people will be in hell. The good people will enjoy the luxuries of heaven, but will be unable to do anything about the people in the hell. So these good people will either be helpless in doing anything for the people in hell, or simply wouldn't care. Both the thoughts are terribly selfish and are devoid of any meaningful purpose. Would you be happy knowing that some of your friends, family, loved ones are being tortured for eternity in a terrible place at the hands of this evil monster? I don't think I would want to live in that heaven. The whole concept is silly and reeks of ancient men's dodgy sales tactics. If It's a good point because... The whole idea about hell and him being like, would you want to be, would you want to be in heaven knowing that, you know, all your loved ones are in hell and all that stuff. Uh, And then, you know, I hear other people, like I've heard other religious beliefs, well, God will take that away. So you're not even, you you don't even know that that's happening. Right. Right. But then you're not you. You've eliminated, you've eliminated part of who you are. But the bottom line is that's other people's business. I don't care Mm -hmm. how other people regard it. I for all I know, the, there's many people that are religious that swear up and down they believe and they've even been healed. And on their secret time, they're like, I don't believe any of this shit. I don't care what other people think. I only yeah. care about my own experience. You know, what do I actually think? And sometimes I forget that there are people coming to these conclusions. I, there are conclusions I have yet to come to that other people are way ahead of me on. But on these things, it's like I settled most of these thoughts a long time ago. It's yeah. not shocking to me. It's like, no... Why would heaven be made of streets of gold? Why would there, you know, if it's a spiritual realm, why would you even eat? What do you have a mouth for other than to eat and, you know, in a physical realm, you know, does God have genitals? Does he have eyeballs? Does he, what, like, that's all physical shit. Yeah. So why would, I've thought of this stuff a long time ago, but I got to remember, just like people have to have patience with me on things I've yet to discover. I've done the thought reconnaissance. Yeah. A lot of it doesn't make any damn sense. Yeah. But some of it maybe does. And it also could be symbolic, you know. Sometimes it could be, you know, you ever thought of that some of these scriptures talking about heaven and hell um, are are symbolic of states of being on earth? Oh, okay. well, hell here. yeah. Like, to me, I, it's, I totally think that you heaven, can be in heaven hell is here. a state of, yeah, heaven and hell are a state of mind within us. Jesus himself said the kingdom of heaven is within you. Right. 
So right? you, you, and not just him. That's also in like Buddhist teachings and other teachings. Yeah, yeah but that you know, think ideas and verses and stuff get cherry picked. But yeah. that you you know you can make your existence here so bad you don't want to do it. Yeah. Um, and sorry, I, I even in these things I shouldn't talk so arrogantly. Like I've concluded this, and so I just got to wait for everybody else to catch up. No, I could still be see differently. I could still be limited in even how I'm looking at it and, you know, yeah. come to some further conclusions about this stuff. Well, of course. And it, it, all of us, you know, anyone who's watching this, you might see this and be like, oh, I resonate or, you know, oh, I learned something a little new or I learned a lot new. Yeah. You know, so it, it's just one, you know, just another thing to learn about. <laughs> if the criterion of purpose of life is an afterlife, then it means there will be no purpose in the afterlife as there will be no afterlife after the afterlife. So you can agree that there would be no purpose in heaven. So my question to you is, if you are happy to live in an afterlife with no purpose, then why can't you live in this life with no purpose? Lucky for us, that is not even the case in this life. Unlike heaven, there are plenty of purposes in this life. You can make a little donation to a charity that helps feed the starving children. Or you can become a volunteer in a sanctuary that helps reduce animal suffering. You can walk up to a girl or a boy you like and tell them how much you care about them or pick up the phone and call an upset friend that how much you miss him after things went south and would want him or her back in your life. You can start a course that will help you become a nurse or a psychologist or a doctor or a lawyer or anything that you feel passionate about. You yeah. can do all of this which can help not just you but a lot of other living beings on this planet. Hell, you can even start volunteering in the organization that are trying to protect the planet for our future generations. The possibilities are endless. The purposes are endless. There's so much in our world that can use a helping hand that you can give. And in the process, find a purpose and enjoy the benefits of life. Think of how taken for granted that uh, those of us that have fully uh, full operation of our arms and legs and like are generally even somewhat not chronically in pain. Like think of how for granted that is taken. You got arms and legs or even if you don't, You've got speech. You've got a mind. There's always something you can go do good right now. Yeah. You could, like, it's available for you to give somebody even a compliment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, you know what? I loved what, I loved what was said at the end there. Yeah. And whether or not you believed in God or not, you can still do that stuff. Yeah. Whatever it, like, and, and you, sh I, and I think you should. Like, I, like that. It, yeah. It's almost like there's vested interests, you know, in people that are business minded trying to keep you in some very petty state of like, well, why the fuck would I go give somebody a compliment when I've got money to go make? <laughs> you're in hell. That's hell, by yeah. the way. That's, you're already there. You don't yeah. need to die to go there. You fucking hell bound human. You know, you're, you would, you'd have no interest in helping people doing something good that doesn't, you have yeah. no interest in that. Then you are full of trauma. Go seek therapy because you're going to just isolate yeah you know we are the human race we definitely are social creatures yeah there, there's no sort there's no shortage of purposes that you can go out and find that you can yeah. start today if yeah. you were feeling down if you if you're stuck in a hard place nothing cures yeah. sadness like helping yeah. someone else and mm -hmm. and you know I, I understand what it's like to be ideologically possessed there are some people that would get angry at the suggestion that they're not right in dominating in business and you want you know you better just your next words better be i wish i was you or we're gonna fight you know <laughs> i understand that i understand yeah. that that's a yeah. place to be yeah but, but not even not even business though but you you can get lost in religious ideology yeah you know some yeah. people some of the comments that we get we get a lot of great comments and thank you oh, all. yeah but sometimes we get some that are you know just like pushing an ideological agenda like no my way and they write pages mm -hmm. to tell us how right they are yeah. I was like, you could lose your whole life defending an ideological belief. Well, there's different reasons for that. Some people probably do that because they actually want to save our souls or something. Yeah, yeah. And then some people do it because, you know, they got to, you know, I think it's a peculiar thing sometimes. Remember what I said? Like, why don't you check with your own experience and your own mind and your own soul? There, isn't it peculiar that sometimes it seems like there's this verification process? Like, you believe it too, right? Where's yeah. the people that, okay, we believe, we're doing it as a group, so this is the real thing. <laughs> it's the real McCoy. Yeah. You know, you gotta go to bed at the end of the day with yourself. What do you really think? How do you really feel? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. All right, well, 
This is great. An atheist perspective on this. Uh, I'm glad we took a look at it. A great video. Uh, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, share this with a friend, and everybody, until next time, stay, stay spiritual. spiritual. <laughs>